Hello guys, welcome back to our channel and for today's video is another concept about your community health nursing is specifically under your IMCI. So this is basically part of the video series that I am doing about IMCI. So this is one of the main symptoms that we are assessing under your IMCI protocol, which is your ear problem. So for other videos about IMCI, I'm going to paste the link on our description box. I advise you to watch those videos first before watching these videos so that you'll be able to relate now to the discussions that we have specifically on the danger signs, the age group of the child, and the other important concepts prior of us going to ear problem. Okay, so ear problem is basically one of the conditions that are being targeted or being managed under your integrated management of childhood illnesses for children below five years old. So your ear problem, okay, assessment still we always start with assessing, okay, if the visit is an initial visit or a follow-up visit. Then afterwards, we are going so basically you're going to assess your ear problem after assessing the other main symptoms. Okay, so basically, na assess mo na dyan ang danger sign, the age of the child, initial or follow up visit, and even the other main symptoms have been already assessed once you are here in your ear infection. So, once you're here in your ear infection, you're going to ask and look for the following assessment. Our mnemonics is PET. P stands for pain. Assess if there is presence of pain. You include the PQRST of pain or the characteristics, location, and the pain scale. Okay, ng pain. If the child can provide those information. Another one is you need to check for ear discharges or any presence of pus coming out from the ear. And you have to ask or assess how long the condition is. And the last one is you have to assess or palpate and even check for the presence of tender swelling behind the ear because this may indicate also an infection. So this is what an ear discharges looks like. So we call this in Tagalog as luga or in Filipino as luga. And this is what a tender swelling behind the ear looks like. Okay, so those are the assessment findings that you need to take note in assessing the child's ear. Now, what are the three classifications or what are the classifications under your ear problem? Number one classification is your mastoiditis, followed by your acute, then followed by your chronic, and the last one is your no ear infection. So what is the difference between these three and four and how are we going to classify them accordingly? Let's start with your mastoiditis. So basically, your mastoiditis is an inflammation of your mastoid gland, which is located just behind your ear. That's why an inflammation of this condition may will result into a tender swelling behind the ear, which is the only symptoms or signs that you need to assess in order to confirm the presence of mastoiditis. And once mastoiditis is present, you will classify the condition under pain classification. And as we already know, pain classification requires an urgent referral after giving the first dose of appropriate antibiotic. For the first dose of appropriate antibiotic, please do access the link that I'll be placing in your description box, which is the appropriate antibiotic and the use of uh, diazepam to children who needs to refer urgently. So, and don't po yung ampicillin plus gentamicin as our first combination drug to manage your pink classification antibiotic management. And pag walang ampicillin, we can make use of your penicillin plus your um, penicillin plus your uh, gentamicin. So for more information, please do access the video about appropriate antibiotic for urgent referral, uh, urgent referral children. Okay. Of course, since uh, my pain po ito, okay, we will also be giving the first dose of paracetamol for pain and also the management if the child is having fever. Then after that, after that, refer urgently to the nearest hospital for further management. So that is your mastoiditis, the only pain classification under your ear problem as uh, main symptoms. The next one is your acute ear infection. Of course, pag meron tayong acute, there is also chronic. So acute ear infection is basically based on the number of days, how long the child has the infection. So the days is 
less than 14 days or less than two weeks if the child is having ear pain plus a discharges from the ear less than 14 days that is considered or categorized as acute ear infection chronic naman po pag more than 14 days so what is the treatment so this is a condition Okay, that is there is an ongoing infection at hindi pa siya ganun katagal. So the management for this one is to give the appropriate antibiotic which is amoxicillin. Okay, same preparation and drug of choice for patient with pneumonia. So you're going to give amoxicillin. Of course, for fever and pain, you give the first dose of paracetamol. Then after that, dry the ears by waking. We are going to describe uh, how are you going to do your dry by waking. And follow up in five days. Okay. Of course, um, the five days will not be followed if there are presence of other general dangerous sign. Okay. After discharge from the clinic, the child needs to uh, be uh, uh, returned to the clinic immediately. Uh, but, 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 pero pag wala naman po other signs, then the patient will come back after five days. Okay. So what are the antibiotic use? Again, same preparation with your antibiotic for pneumonia. We have the age group and weight now 2 to 12, 1 to 3, and 3 to 5, okay, or 4 to 10 kilogram, 10 to 14 kilogram, and 14 to 19 kilogram. For the suspension, 250 milligram per 5 ml, that would be 5, 10, 15 ml, respectively, while 2.5 ml naman po for drops under 2 to 12 months lang po ang available dose. Amoxicillin will be given twice a day for the next 5 days. Again, advise the parents about on how to take the oral medications. Explain to them why, why is it given. Kailangan alam din mo nila kung para saan yung gamot, paano ibigay ang gamot, and what are the alternative measurements that they can use at home. And explain to them that finishing amoxicillin or antibiotic, any form of antibiotic is very important to prevent your uh, drug resistance na tinatawa. And for the use of paracetamol for pain and fever, this is the... Um, table for that. You can screenshot or uh, post this video to copy this table. So, age and weight, 2 to 3 years old, 2 months to 3 years old, and 3 years old to 5 years old naman po tayo. Uh, 4 to 14 kilogram and 14 kilogram to 19 kilogram ang ating basis. For the syrup, 120 milligram to 50 milligram per 5 ml and 100 milligram per ml ang ating mga available doses. If in case there is no syrup or mga elixirs or solutions, we can make use of paracetamol, a tablet, 500 milligram. So for two months to three years old, we may give one for tablet and half tablet naman po for three years old to five years old. Again, they, make, they should make use of available uh, home-based measurement. Okay, now how are we going to perform your dry waking? Okay, so dry waking plus the application of your ear wraps or your quinolones. For dry waking, we have to do this three times a day. How? By rolling a clean absorbent cloth or soft or even a strong tissue paper into a wick. So, para siyang pa, paninipisin mo ng para malito para magkasya sa tenga. Okay, so you're going to place the wick in the child's ear, remove the wick when it's wet, change it or replace it, okay, and keep repeating the same procedure until the wick is dry okay so for dry waking we do this in uh, in both acute and chronic ear infection okay then after that instill quinolone ear wraps after dry waking which is done three times a day for the next two weeks again your quinolone or installation of quinolone is only done in your chronic ear infection. Kasi sa chronic ear infection, hindi na po magiging effective ang oral antibiotics. That's why the application of antibiotic is direct using ear drops. And, uh, ear drops. And for the quinolone ear drops, we will be using your ciprofloxacin, norfloxacin, or ofloxacin to manage chronic ear infection. Speaking of chronic ear infection, once again, chronic ear infection is a past draining from the ear for more than 14 days or more than two weeks. The treatment, okay, is different from the acute ear infection in a sense that we are not going to give an oral antibiotic of amoxicillin. Instead, we are going to apply now or instill your quinolones ear wraps, okay, into the client's ear. But we also still be doing your dry waking 
and before giving now your quinolone earlass for 2 weeks or 14 days. So, and follow up for 5 days pa rin naman po. Same thing with your acute. Let me just uh, this, uh, differentiate again. Acute versus chronic ear infection. Less than 14 days acute. Above 14 days chronic. In terms of treatment, both of them will follow up in, 14, uh, in 5 days. Both of them will need dry waking. Okay. Uh, only acute though will be receiving amoxicillin twice a day for 5 days. And... Uh, your uh, quinolone ear drops is only for chronic ear infection. Sana po maliwanag tayo dyan. And the last classification, okay, and the last classification is no other than your no ear infection, which uh, the assessment is that no presence of ear pain and pus or discharges coming out from the ear. Treatment is, of course, no treatment since there is no presence of problem. Okay, so that is your ear infections. If you do have any questions or clarifications that you want to clarify, don't forget or hesitate to comment down on the comment section. And please tell me where you're coming from or saan ka po so that I'll be able to have an idea where my videos are reaching. Okay, again, the other videos about IMCI are posted in our description box. Don't forget to access them and watch them in your most convenient time. So thank you very much. Please abangan nyo pa ati mga susunod na videos about IMCI. That would be all. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.